They're hoping to have a like, positive change in their life. So can you guys guess what would be the top 10 New Year's resolution list? Anybody? Lose weight. Huh? Lose weight. Lose weight, okay. Go to the gym. Go to the gym, okay. Someone else? Get a job. Get a job, there you go. Let's go to the next page. I, I see, I show you the list. And there we go, this, this is top 10. So exercise more, lose weight, get organized, learn a new skill or hobby, live life to the fullest, save money or spend less, and quit smoking and spend more time with family and friends, travel more and uh, read more. As you just saw the screen, you know, many people, they, they want to experience something positive change in their lives. We just start with a fresh mind in the New Year's. And I'm sure that both you and I, we all hope that our life would go and get really better. And we try to like grow you know, through the goals that we make. And maybe some of you might wanna go to college of your dreams. And some of you wanna get a job that you dreamed of. And maybe others of you want to earn a lot of money so that you can live a comfortable and a stable life. And in the end, we all hope that this thing can happen because we're worried about our future all the time and how are we gonna live our lives in the future. So when we think about these, we can ask these questions. Is it really that important to live a good life? Is it that important? I would say yes, it is important. It is important to live a good life. However, we live our life not really knowing exactly like what we should live a good life. And we wonder why we should be starting right now. And sometimes we don't know why we are working in the job that we have right now, and so on. And we don't really you know, think deep into the why we're doing the what we do right now. And similarly, sometimes we don't even think about why we should come to the church, and why we come to church, we don't think about that either. Now sometimes you may come to church because your parents told you so, and some can be like friends, and people around you come to the church, that's why you might, you might come to church. But it's a, in a busy society, like just like right now, we are, since we're too busy, we're busy going along with what everyone else is doing right now. And because of this, we sometimes live our life at school, at work, at the church, without a clear purpose or a goal. A lot of people in 21st century think that what the majority is doing is something important. And I thought the same way too. And oftentimes we think that what the majority is saying is important and correct. But is it really true? Is it true that majority say if it's right, is everything right? Like for example, at the school, like if we're taking an exam, so what if we're taking, why are we taking an exam? What if everyone's cheating at the same time? Can we say it's a good thing? I think there's a movie on Netflix, I think Hong Kong or somewhere, they're so good, like some girl is really smart, so she like kind of cheated everything for SAT or gained some money. So they all cheat at the same time, all the classmates. So is that a good thing? Is that a good thing because the majority is doing? No. What if if majority of people who drive, if they ignore the traffic rules or like park illegally? Does it make those act, you know, important or good? So does it mean that we can just cheat on the exams and just park anywhere we want to do? No, we can't do that. But the world says that it is important to live a comfortable life and eating well and having wealth and power. So a lot of people, they study really hard to go to good college and they work really hard to achieve their kind of life. And so
some of those says like they are like most desperate to live a good life, have a good job, and earn a lot of money. So they work really hard to make sure that their children go to good schools, get a good job, and you know, also live a good and comfortable life. But Jesus says something different in the Bible. The teachings of Jesus crash with the standards of this world. Jesus wakes us up from the mindset that thinks food, clothing, and shelter is the most important thing in the world. Let's go next page. The Matthew 6, 31, 32 says, So do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? But the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. Now Jesus says in the Bible that taking care of what to eat, what to drink, and what to wear is not important. And it's not to worry about. Now those are what the pagans go after in the world. In the Bible, pagans, they, it, it refers to the people that who do not know God. And if you do not know God, then living a good life, and thinking about what to eat, what to drink, and what to wear, and where to live, become what is most important in your life. However, if we know God, do you know God? I know God. If we know God, no, then these things cannot become our priority. Why is that? It is because God is our Father. And we are his children. Wouldn't God, that almighty God, Father, take care of food, clothing, or shelter for his sons and daughters? Would he already have taken care of all those needs for his children? We need to decide today what we are going to do, consider more important in our life. Are you going to worry about living a good life in this world? Or are you going to let go of all these worries and give it to Jesus? Matthew, Matthew 6, 25, 30 says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life. What you will eat or drink or about your body, what you will wear, is not life more than food and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. And yet, your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more about it than they? Can any one of you by worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow. They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothed the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into fire, we he not much more clothe you, you of little faith. Jesus said, those who worry about what to wear, what to drink, and what to eat, they're shallow. In faith, shallow in faith. Now, faith is most important, most important for sure, in determining the priorities in our lives. A lot of people think that having faith is simply just believing that God exists. That's how we think. But however, faith explained the Bible is not about whether or not you accept the fact that God exists. But the Bible states that. Faith is having a personal relationship with God. It is about having a loving relationship with God. And because we can have this kind of relationship with God, we can trust Him because we are His children. So we must trust God. And like a little kid, you know, they fully trust Him in their own father or mother. Jesus said that if a human father, you know, does not turn away and reject from their children, 
So then would our father, you know, turn away from us? Would he? I don't think so. Because I'll be on our side. Now, living a good life in this world should not be the most important thing in our life. So what should be important in our life? Do you guys know what should be important? From the Bible, it says our spiritual lives are more and much more important than our physical lives. And God tells us to first receive what is the most important thing, which is the Holy Spirit. Instead of living for a successful life in this world, we, we have to live a life in the presence of the Holy Spirit. As, as human, as we are human, we are not just animals. And we are spiritual beings. Unlike all things on the earth, we are made by God with a purpose. God provided great things you know, to us. So therefore, that we shouldn't say that materials are more important in our lives. We humans, we humans, will never be satisfied with what we have on this earth. Even if you have a whole world, your heart cannot be filled entirely. Because our hearts are made to be a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. God created us to be with Him. So if Jesus is not in our hearts, we will never satisfy with anything in this world. Let's go to the next picture. These are my lovely nephews. So the first one is five years old, second one is three years old, and the last one is uh, the far right is uh, one years old. So I'm showing this picture because uh, a couple weeks ago I, I visited Korea. And my last nephew, he just turned one. So they had a like celebration, like Choto like celebration. They had that. So for like three weeks, I was taking care of the, the last one because my brother and you know, sister-in-law sister was really busy. So I was, you know, taking care of him. You know, I'm, I'm trying to talk about him because he feels like most comfortable when, you know, he is with his mom's arm. I mean... No matter like how much like milk is filled up in the bottles, or like no matter how many like uh, you know, diapers that there are, or like if there's a, a full of like toys in the room, he doesn't really care. I mean, those first two cares about the toys, but the last one doesn't care at all. He needs mom. He needs mom. So when when I'm like playing with him, he's okay if mom is around. And he, he does fine for like, so I was taking care of him for like two, three hours. So I was just playing with him. But as soon as his mom goes away, like goes to like, you know, room or like restroom, he instantly know, noticed that mom is gone. And he started crying. And I feel bad because I was the one playing with him for like last three hours. As soon as mom is gone, like he's like, he's going crazy. So I was like, why, why is it? Like, why is he crying? Because he knows what he wants. And he knows what is important to him. Now, including my nephew, a lot of babies, they eat, drink without thinking about, you know, what their mom gives them. You know? And they don't doubt, like, uh, saying, oh, what is, like, what is that, like, my mom is feeding me? Right? They don't do that. Like, they don't think in that way. They just eat. Because they completely trust their mom. And they, they take whatever that their mom gives to them. You know, trusting completely without doubting. That's what they do. But that is faith. You know, that is what faith is. You know, faith is not like, you know, we asking God to respect our priorities. But faith is coming before God to follow His priorities. That's what faith is. And a lot of people think that worship is you know, one of the most important things that we can do as a Christian. I mean, it's true. It is. The worship is what God wants us to do. And while that is important too, having a good relationship with your brothers 
and sisters is more important than worship. Loving other people is very important. Serving our family and the people we love is very important. But do we first love and serve the people that we love before our school, our work, our career? We say we love our families, but we easily hurt them too. Because sometimes we forget the importance of our loved ones. I know the preparing, you know, for the college or preparing for, your, preparing for your career is very important. I'm not saying these are not important, they are important. However, we should be clear about you know, what is more important in our lives. There shouldn't be any confusion. So we must make a decision today. Today, you know, let's love our family and those, you know, around us. And let us serve others first. And let us become one in Christ. And these are more important in life. You know, Jesus came to this earth to overturn the priority of this world. As we know, there's no difference between the rich and the poor in the sight of God. And there's no difference between the talented and the untalented. Because we are all sinners. Jesus clarifies that the importance and the value of our lives. He wants people to have faith. So they can go out to the world and share the, what they have experienced about God from God. But today, you know, many students I know, they focus on their studies for the future. And a lot of people, they work hard to earn money or get a high position. And some people study really hard to get a job. And many people, I, I believe that they you know, try to you know, have a good life and comfortable life. But we have to know that money, position, power, will not give you the satisfaction. We have to remember, humans, we are not made for wealth or power, but God. We made to live by the word of God and his grace. Now Jesus emphasized many times in the Bible that the most important thing in life is the relationship that we can have now, after stating that career, money, and material, you know, they do not come first, now Jesus concludes with these words. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all things, all these things will be given to you as well. Now, Jesus tells us to pursue spiritual things first. Jesus tells us that we must seek God's kingdom and his righteousness. Now, spirituality is invisible to our physical eyes. We can't see. So we need the courage sometimes to give up what we see now in front of us for the things that are unseen. Faith is pursuing the things that are unseen and the things that are eternal. You know, we live in the world where a majority of people disagree that the most important thing in the world is to have faith in Christ. People don't agree with that. So there are many times when we come to church, we get confused. Because the world does not teach us this truth. In our daily lives, the value of the world and the value of God crash. But when we decide to live as the Bible teaches us, the Bible sometimes asks for our sacrifice. Now, Jesus called us to do the most important thing right now. Right now. Jesus is telling us to follow him. 
However, being a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ, it does not guarantee success in this world. It does not. Even if we come to the church every Sunday and worship as we do right now, it does not guarantee that we will go to our dream college or dream job or the dream family or future that we dream of. In a sense, we may experience failure you know, by following Jesus Christ and choosing to do the things that others do not do in this world. But when we decide to follow Jesus and dedicate our lives as a disciple of Christ, we get to the cross. You know? The cross reminds us that denying must be followed. And it is the only way to change our priorities in life. When we decide to follow the path of Jesus Christ and become his disciples, we may encounter unexpected hardship. Maybe that we will be left alone in the world. But with that, would you, would you still decide to follow Jesus? Would you? According to Luke 9, 23, it says, we must deny ourselves daily to become a disciple who follow Jesus. And that is that then he said, to them all, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and wait, take up their cross daily and follow me. The people in the world they live for the self-achievement. You know, the purpose of their lives is to set to achieve the futures that they have dreamed or planned out. But Jesus said that to become his disciples requires self-denial. So Jesus is telling us to telling us that those who deny themselves and follow him, they will ex experience the kingdom of God. So, so what is more important to you? Is it more important to go to your dream school? Is it more important to have a good job? Is it more important to have a family that you know, others will envy? Is it more important to have a good life? What really matters in my life? Is it more important to come to church every Sunday? Is it more important to live according to the word of Jesus? Is it more important that every day life be worshipped? We must ask ourselves these questions every day. So, what is the most important things to us? Why do we have to do this such thing? And I have lived a, I haven't like lived a long time. I'm pretty young, 29. So I don't know if I can say this, but as far as you know, I know our lives are short. I think it's short. It's pretty short. We have short lives. But if you don't take this seriously, like you may live without knowing what is most important in your life. So we must do the most important thing right now. Because no one knows that what our lives will be in the future. So ESC and youth, have a faith in Jesus Christ. Let the Holy Spirit dwell in you, each one of you. Become child of God, then you will know what is the most important thing in your life. And all your worries and troubles will be solved and removed. Now forgive first. Love first. Listen to the word of Jesus for what the world tells us. You know, listen to the wisdom of God before the knowledge of the world. Believe the word of God before believing in the foolish stories of the world. You know, nothing in this world is guaranteed. But when we decide to deny ourselves 
And he said to follow Jesus Christ. We will all enjoy the glory of the eternal kingdom of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, sometimes it is easy to wonder where our lives are going. And there are many choices to make in our daily lives. But more than that, we will need a plan for our lives. And what is in store for our future? God, you have a perfect plan for us. And your will for our lives is all that we care about. We have a vision for the world and the power to help it from the past. And our goals are to follow you in everything. And whatever your will is, then we will follow completely. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Can we all rise for responsibility?
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the great love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all who are seeking the most important thing in our life and finding it in seeking His kingdom and His righteousness now and forever. Amen. Peace that we'll be arriving in about 10 minutes.